that you have helped us to finish the seventh ladder of the year 2023. We saw through January, February, March, April, May, June, and now July has ended. Glory be to your name for the mercies that we have received and for the glory that is tabernacle over our lives. Thank you for the battles that you have won for us. And thank you for those ones that are still, that are still there. Your intention is that through all of those things, we might become strong and to train our fingers to war. Holy Father, I pray that you will give us understanding this day as we have come to learn at your feet in the name of Jesus. Amen. Holy Spirit, I commit every heart here into your care. Do you do the work that only you alone can do in the name of Jesus. Amen. I ask that the Holy Spirit, through your power, you will take control of the speaking of your word and the hearing of your word this day in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. I ask, O oh God, that you will transform every one of us and you will bless us tremendously. Thank you, Lord, because we have done it. In Jesus' name we pray. Please be seated. We are looking at walking in the reality of the abundance Christ provided. Walking in the abundance, in the reality of the abundance Christ provided. It is the will of God for us to walk in abundance. Because Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 10, he said, in the big part of it, he said, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So, abundance is our heritage in Christ. God is willing to release to us abundance life, abundance of Christ's life, and abundance of all that is available for us in Christ. So, we have dealt with the preamble, we dealt with the agent of this grace that we need to delete in our lives. And I think we have come to the procuring stamina for abundance. Eh? Okay, I think we have dealt with humility. Eh? And two, be closer to God in purity. Okay. And uh, number three. Okay. We stopped at two. Okay. Now, for you to procure, please, what we are communicating to you is that is the will of God for you and I to walk in the reality of abundance. That this teaching will not just be a theory in our head, it will be an experience of life. And if that is going to take place, and that's the reason why we are, you know, learning. Now, we told you that abundance cannot be handled by a little child. So there is need for you and I to procure stamina for abundance. And the way to do that Number one is that we got to be humble. When we are humble, we have given God the premise to release grace. Grace is only given to those who are humble. So if you are proud, even if you pray for grace, you will not have grace. Grace is available only to those who are humble. I also need to tell you that even if you are humble and you don't pray, you might not have grace. Because you, if you don't ask, you will not have. God wants us to live our lives and live this new creation life in Christ Jesus in the fullness of the grace of God. And for us to have that, we need to be humble. Then number two, we told you that we need to be closer to God. The more we are closer to God, the more we need to become more pure. We have to be pure because you cannot be keeping company with sin or fellowshipping with sin or you are 
you know, interacting with sinners in all your day-to-day -day activities. And when I'm interacting with sinners, I'm not saying you should not relate with sinners. But what I'm saying is that if sinners are your friend, uh, sinners are your friends, and uh, they are the company you keep, it's a matter of reality that you will soon join them in doing what they do. So, the more you are closer to God, the more your life even become more hard for people who are out there to relate with. Yeah. Um, don't, 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 you can't say, I have God, and you are tabernacle, and you, you pitch your tent at Sodom. Yeah. Sodom, you can't, you can't pitch your tent at Sodom and say you want to be righteous. It will never work. Lord did it. He lost it his entire family for doing that. Aha. Uh -huh. He lost all that he has. And uh, he lost even his future as it were. So we need to be closer to God. Then number three, for us to have stamina, we need to be passionate about extending the kingdom of God. Um let's come to Sekraya chapter one. Sekraya chapter one. Zechariah chapter 1 verses 14 to 17. Listen to the word of God. So the angel spoke with me and said to me, proclaim, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am sealed for Jerusalem and for Zion with great seal. Now, you, you and I need to be sealed. Jerusalem in this context means the city of, the, of God, the city of the gospel. It means um, the company of um, the saints in Christ Jesus said, I am sealed for Jerusalem and for Zion with great seal. I'm exceedingly hungry with the nations at ease. While we, I was a little angry and they helped, but with evil intent. Therefore, thus says the Lord, I am returning to Jerusalem with mercy. My house shall be built in it, says the Lord of hosts, and a severe line shall be stretched out over Jerusalem. Now listen to this verse 17. Again proclaim, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, My cities shall again spread out through prosperity. My cities shall again spread out through prosperity. So the city of God, as I told you, is the gospel, the kingdom of God. The only way to spread it out is through prosperity. And this is the word of God. So you cannot afford not to have abundance because we will not be able to spread the gospel across the globe. And we have a global commission. Jesus said, go ye into the world and preach the gospel. That is the Great Commission. And it is a global global commission. So the parish is the entire world. We are to carry the gospel to the whole world. And God is saying that he is committed to spread his gospel through prosperity. Now, if your heart is not in line with God's Heartbeat. Even if you have abundance, you will squander it on yourself or on self-project. So that is the need for you and I to be passionate for the extension of the kingdom of God. So we must not just be callous and be selfish and think that since we have heard the gospel and we have the opportunity to see the depth of the truth of the word of God what about others who have never heard of Jesus what about others who do not have access to what we have access to and the way to do that is that the product that we are selling is Christ and we need to take our product to those who need it and the entire world every human being needs Christ Every human being needs Christ. And the way 
to go about it according to this prophecy is that God is, is saying my city shall again spread out through prosperity. The Lord will again comfort Zion and will again choose Jerusalem. Come again to Acts chapter 4 verse 33 for you to see this matter of being passionate for extending the kingdom of God. We extend the kingdom by preaching the gospel. Now come to Acts chapter 4 and the verse 33. Acts 4 33. Say, and with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. So we must be committed to spread the gospel. Please, do you learn to that point? Now, and for us to procure stamina, the fourth thing that we must do, and which must become our lifestyle, is loving the Lord. We must love the Lord. You and I, we must love the Lord. And uh, you need to know the first mark of a, a true disciple is genuine love for God. And uh, not only genuine, it must be supreme. Yeah, that is the mark of a true disciple. That's the first mark. We have about 10 marks in the scriptures which identify how a true disciple. So I believe you are a disciple and if you are one, then you must love the Lord. If you don't love the Lord, you cannot have stamina to carry abundance. And you cannot even have access to abundance. In First Kings chapter three, verses three and four, First Kings chapter three, verses three and four. Listen to the word of God. And Solomon loved the Lord. I don't know whether you love God. This is the record of the scripture it says Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statues of his father David, except that he sacrificed and burned incense at the high places. Now the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. If you love the Lord, the first thing that you will show to God and to anybody around you that you love God is that you will sacrifice. I want to ask you, how many of your uh, resources has been poured on God. What have you given in your life? Since you claim that you are born again, what have you given? You no, know, we read here that this man gave God a thousand burnt offerings. A thousand burnt offerings. The, the first parameter to know that you really love is to give. John 3 says, God so loved the world, and he would do what? He gave. So, anyone that loves, gives. So, Solomon demonstrated his love towards God by giving to God. He offered sacrifices to God. And come again to chapter 19. Let's see another man who loved the Lord, and that was Elijah. Elijah, if you love God, you'll be jealous for God. Yeah, you will jealous for God. You want to fight his fight and you want to be his friend. Now, First Kings chapter 19, verse 14. Listen to the word of God. And he said, I've been very zealous. I've been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. And I think in James, he used the word jealous. Yeah. Anyone who is jealous will always be zealous. He said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel are forsaking your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left and they seek to take my life. Do you really love the Lord? Where is your jealousy for God? If you love God, what pains God will pay you? What burden the heart of God will also burden your heart. And you know, in 1 Samuel 17, 26, verse 45, 
and 46. You see, David also, he loved the Lord. You know, the embarrassment that Goliath was bringing upon the nation Israel, especially Goliath meant to disgrace the God of Israel because he was actually challenging the God of Israel. And many people were there. They were not disturbed because they didn't love God. Saul, even the leader, did not love God. But David loved the Lord. That embarrassment, that challenge, he took it up and he faced it head on and he fought and he won. And it was not his personal fight. So I need to ask you, have you ever fought for God? Have you ever faced any battle for God? Have you ever attempted to fight on behalf of God? That is what we found in David. And Jesus said in John 15, 15, that if you are my friend, you will obey me. He said, if you love me, you will obey me. Please, are you getting what I'm talking about? Now, I've, I've given you four characteristics of any heart where love for the Lord is found. The first I told you is sacrifice. That person we give to God. Number two, that person will be jealous for God. It will be zealous. People that are jealous, they want to remove the reproach on the name of the Lord. Those who love God and they are jealous, they want to protect the name of the Lord. Say, our Father, our Lord, be thy name. There are evil powers that want to defy the name of our God. So, if you love God, you will fight to protect that name. And number three, you will fight the battles of God if you love him. David fought the fight of God. He fought God's battle and he won. And number four, I told you is that if you love him, you will do what? You will obey. You will obey. So please check your life. If you are not doing these things, then you don't love God. And I need to tell you, you don't need to pray, God, I want to love you. It's a decision of the heart. And let me also let you know that you do not have option. You must love God because it is commanded. We are commanded to love the Lord God with all of our heart and with all of our soul, with all of our mind and with all of our strength. Please do you learn to that point. So, in fact, if you don't love God, let me quickly tell you that uh, you are not born of God. Because God himself is love. So, how will God be in you and you will not love him? In Deuteronomy chapter 29, Deuteronomy 29 and 29, 29 verse 29, it said, the secret things belong to the Lord our God but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever that we may do all the works of this law. So if you love God, God will show you his secret. And that was what Jesus said to his disciples. He said, all that I have received from the Father, I have told you. Please, do you learn to that point? Eh? So, this for we must have for us to have strength for abundance. We must be humble so that God's energy, which is grace, will be released to our lives. And we need to be closer to him and walk in purity. We need to be passionate about the extension of his kingdom. 
and we need to love the Lord. Now let's come to practical steps to abundance. Practical steps. Now we have five here. Yeah, five. Number one is prayer. Number two is absolute trust in God. Number three is dedication of your body. Number four is the renewal of your mind. And number five is readiness to give. Now, we are going to take them one after the other. But please listen. If you really want abundance, the first practical step is that you got to pray. Come to Second Chronicles. I have once said it here that if you only pray when there is trouble, you are already in trouble. Do you remember I've said it before? Yes, I beg of you, don't wait until trouble comes before you pray. I don't pray that you should have war. No. I don't pray that you should have war. But build your life in God such that prayer according to the scriptures, prayer to the spirit life is like oxygen to the natural life. So let prayer become your lifetime. Don't let it be that when things scattered, when you now have troubles, when things are no longer working, when there are, there are troubles around you, and that is, don't let prayer be the last result. Second Corinthians 26 verse 5. He sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God, and as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. Anybody that prays prospers. If you are praying and you do not prosper, check it very well. Check your life. Psalm 34 verse 10 The young lions lack and suffer hunger. What God is saying is that your strength will fail you. But those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. So we must pray. You must pray to prosper. You must pray to have abundance. And Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Please, I beg of you, pray. There are four altars you must have as a child of God if you have a family. If you are a family man or a family woman, you have a, you have a home of your own. You must, it must be five. If you are single, then your altars must be three. The first altar that you must, and this prayer altar, I'm dealing with four prayer altars. The first one is personal altar. Personal prayer altar. Please, let me quickly tell you. If you don't pray, you are committing sin. How many of you know that? That prayerlessness is a sin. 
Please raise up your hand if you know. Okay. If you don't know, prayerlessness is a sin. What you are telling God is that you are telling God, God, I don't need you. In fact, that is the peak of pride. Jesus came here to show us how to live. Jesus never toiled with prayer. He prayed. He prayed about everything. And he prayed about all things. Jesus prayed to the point that he spent all night praying. So, you need personal altar. I don't know anyone who is a saint in the Bible who is prayerless. To be prayerless, even if you are saved, is to degenerate to become a sinner. So you are a sinner if you don't pray. How come you spend 24 hours without consulting God? How come you spend 168 hours in a week without consulting God? So, you need to build personal prayer altar. The reason why God encounters people primarily is not for religion. It's for relationship. And the starting point to relate with God is in the place of personal altar. And one thing I have found that is constant and consistent with God is that when you and God have a deal of meeting, God never means appointment. If you tell God, the Lord, I want to be waking up every 12 a.m. to pray. Lord, come and wake me up. No matter how tired you have walked in the day, God will come to your bedside and wake you. It is time to discuss. If you are prayerless, forget about abundance. And please, many of you, you like to work hard, run etta, sketa, try to make things work and end up in disgrace. Jesus made prayer his number one priority. And that was why and that's why he spent the early hours of his day with the father. So prayer must not become the last thing for you. It must be the first thing you do each day of your life. So build a personal prayer altar. Then number two, if you are married, then you must have couples prayer altar. That husband and wife need to pray because the family that prays together stays together. The way to knit the spirits of the two lives in marriage together is by praying. But please, let me tell you, that is only possible if that marriage is not a marriage of an unequal yoke. There is no way to unite darkness and light. You can be coupled in the body, but you, are, you can never be coupled in the spirit if one is of darkness and the one is of light. You can only have religious prayer altar. And that's why those of you that are born again, that you know God, that you love God, if you are still single, don't marry an unbeliever. To marry an unbeliever is to invite devil into your life. 
every unbeliever is a child of the devil. So when you marry the devil's daughter, then devil becomes your father-in-law. Then is it a crime for your father-in-law to visit you? And it's going to be a frequent visit. You don't need to, it is Jesus that you need to, to, to invite. If you don't invite Jesus, he will not come into your life. Are you getting what I'm talking about? But you don't need to invite devil. I allow your journey. So, if you are married, you are you, you must have couples altar. Then the third altar of prayer is family prayer altar. That is you and your household. The husband, the wife, and the children, and everybody that lives with you. Do you understand that? Then the last altar is corporate altar. So, if you are single here, if you don't have a wife and you don't have a husband and you are living with somebody, then you have a family altar with people that you are living with. But if you are living alone, you only you must only have two altars. Please, am I communicating to you? Now, your personal altar and the corporate altar. But if you are if you are single and you are living with a married uh, with a family, you must always observe family altar. Don't isolate yourself from the family setting. God is God of families. Don't be super spiritual. That they call you for prayer meeting, prayer altar in your family altar in your house and say, no, 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 no. They are not in the spirit. It is you that is always in the spirit. Then your spirit is counterfeit. Because the spirit of Jesus says that do not forsake the assembly of one another. Please have I communicated to you. So please come into this reality. Don't let just this be a theory. We are teaching you what is the life of Christ. Don't excuse yourself from corporate altar. The corporate altar is a church altar. And the church it is, is a powerhouse. Your family is just a unit. Of that family. So don't isolate your family. Those of you that are married there. Don't say we pray in our house. No we don't need to. And you discard the congregation. Not that. Don't do that. Anytime we have the privilege to come together. As families in Christ. That's the corporate author I'm talking about. Do your best to be there. Because I need to tell you. What God will not do for you in your. Personal altar. What will not do for you and your husband and your spouse in your couple's altar? What he might not even do for you in your family altar, he will do when we come as a church to pray. And the deliverance, victory comes at the place of corporate altar. If not for the corporate altar, Peter will have been beheaded just like others were beheaded. Do you understand? The prayer of James did not deliver him from the hand of Herod. Please, do you follow me? He was beheaded. And when the church realized that, that Peter also was arrested, the church gathered to pray. Please, do you learn to this point? Please pray. We need to pray. Don't say I'm praying and nothing has happened. Many things are happening when you pray. Don't let what you are asking, what you desire, that you don't have now, don't let that blindfold you of what God is doing. If you say you don't have money, say I've been praying, I'm, I need a good job, I need this, I need this, but you don't have bad head. Hello? You are hale and hardy. You are sound. God have not allowed the counsel of the wicked to be established in your life. God have truncated. Say, I am praying, I have no message. How long have you prayed? So don't believe the lies of the devil. The devil said, okay, you are praying and what has happened? 
Many things are happening. Devil knew. You need to know why is it that devil always wants you to be weak and be weary when it comes to prayer. Those of you that normally sleep in the place of prayer, ask yourself, hey, my pa, you don't say you need. You don't know. You don't know. That is devil that have come to, to make your life a comfort zone to dwell. Because devil knows that when you pray, number one, you become godly. People pray correct prayers. There is no way you fellowship with God and you will love to sing. It's not possible. When you pray, you will know deep secrets. You cannot understand the will of God for your life. You will not know what is, is the next thing in God's agenda for you when you do pray. He said, call upon me and I will answer you. He said, I will show you deep things that you do not know. Number two is absolute trust in God. Beloved, you need to trust God. Jeremiah 17. God is not a respecter of person. One can pray and yet not trust God. But it is not possible for you to trust God and you do not pray. Please get me right. It is possible to pray and you don't trust God. But it is not possible for you to trust God and not pray. People that trust God, they pray always. Prayer can become a religious thing if your heart does not trust God. Now come to Jeremiah 17. Thus says the Lord, cause it is the man who trusts a man. Do you know, even if you trust yourself, do you know you are a man? Hello? Please, are you here? If you trust yourself, that I trust myself, I know how to fix it. That was what killed that prophet. The young prophet, the Elisa protege in 2 Kings chapter 4. He didn't trust God. And he died a miserable death. The only legacy he left for his sons was death. Caused, even if you are anointed, you can be anointed and be caused of God. He said, cause is the man who trusts a man and makes flesh his strength. Whose heart departs from the Lord. How does our heart depart from God? You are praying, Lord, I want to pay my house rent. I want to pay my house rent. I want to pay my house rent. I will speak to Boda Aladijana. That he should help me. After all, we are brethren. I know that brother is a child of God. He knows the word of God. He has the Holy Spirit. So when I go to him, he will help me. Your heart have departed. But you were in the place of prayer. God said, caused be that man. Yes. Now listen. Say, For he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, in a salt land which is not inhabited. Please, do you have a newer version? I just want you to see because this is where many of you are problem here, and that's why you don't have testimonies. People who do not trust God don't have testimonies.
please I want you to read if you have any new version with you just Jeremiah 17 I just named that uh, verses 5 and 6 just for you to know the danger thank you this is what the Lord says mere 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 human who we'll rely on woman's strength? Yeah. Who we'll rely on woman's strength? Uh huh. And turn their heart away from the Lord. Yes. They are like stunted shrub in the desert, mm. with no hope for the future. Yeah. They will live in the barren wilderness, mm. in an uninhabited salty land. Now, do you know what it means to be in a barren land? Do you know what it means for you to inhabit? That you are dwelling there, whatever you are sowing. Can you plant inside salt in a land that is salty and germinate? So, you have practically stagnated your life enough. Even if you trust your salary, you are still trusting a man. If your salary become your source, you are still caused. Your salary must never become your source. God must remain the source of your life. Don't allow anything to displace God. And I need to tell you, some people can flow into your life and they want to play God for you. I know when some of you will like somebody to come to you and say, whenever you have a problem, call me. Anytime you are in trouble, just call me. I know when you hear something like that, you will be giving praises, you will be singing praises to God. You don't know that you are already down for And many times, people that promise like that, you know what they do? <laughs> Maybe you know them. Even if the man was sincere when he was saying it, if you are really God's own, he will erase it in his heart. In fact, you can be walking before him always just for you to remind him. Some of you, you will send SMS, WhatsApp message. Don't forget me, sir. Don't forget. The only time that you are always Respecting people is when you are a beggar. Some of you will never be polite in your life, but when you need help from people, you'll be polite. You'll be doing sa 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 sa. You like this, I even if anybody calls you, hello, hello. But when you want to beg, yes, sir, yes, sir. But look at verse 7. It says, blessed. I love that. That's my choice. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Please show me a man who trusted God and he was ashamed. You don't have testimonies because you have never trusted God. Trust him. Just tell yourself. Call yourself by your name, Joseph, from today. I will not trust anybody. God, you are mine. You know, when God called me into full-time ministry 29 years ago, you know, I knew what it is. I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew. After I've done all my own all my own, from my side, all my own excuses, and I was trying to dodge 
enter into full time service with God and them. When I knew it, that they, they, I have no option. I have it's an obligation. Okay, I accepted, and I told God. I said, God, if you will not take care of me, then I will not consult me. Two things I told God. I said, I will not look for a place to serve. I will not write application for ministry. And in my 29 years of ministry, I've never come fast for ministration. I have never. I told him, you will be the only one I know. You will be the only one. And uh, in the past 29 years, God has been so faithful to me. Yeah, you will have experiences, experiences, unpalatable experiences. It's part of the game. It's part of the rule of the game. Sometimes when I see my picture in those days, I laugh. Yeah. <laughs> Please, are you following? Please, absolute trust in God. Now, please note this. Whatever I don't have now is not good for me. Can you say that? Even if you have prayed and God refuse to give it to you, just know that that thing now is not good for you. If somebody is saying, what do you mean? Do you mean that I'm asking for daily necessities of life? Does it mean I don't need to have a house? Does it mean I don't need to have a cloth, a food? Yeah. If you are asking for food and God does not give you, you don't need that food. There is time and season in life. There is always a wet season and dry season. Nobody pray for rain in dry season. Hello? Since you have been coming to church, and since you have been going to church, have you ever seen when there is dryness, and it is a dry season, it is not the season of rain, have you ever seen church gather to pray? I'm asking you a question. So life is in seasons and phases. So if God does not give you now, probably you are in the dry season of your life. God wants you to understand what it is, what it means to be in dry season. And God wants to teach you how to be sustained. How to live at that dry season and that you will hold no body. He want to teach you contentment. Contentment is not taught in Bible study. It is taught by God practically in experience of daily life. So in our day to day living, God will let you go through certain experiences. Say, so Lord, and some of you, you are greedy. Some of you, you need to pray that God should uproot greed from your heart. You know, recently I realized that if you are praying, alone, call it for me, call it for me. You need to know that you are, you are praying a serious prayer. Even if they give you a house, 
do you have what to sustain it? There is <laughs> you need <laughs> There is resources. There is a level of resources to sustain owning a house and owning a car. Hello? You that you are not, you have not been eating comfortably. You are praying that God should give you a car. Don't you know that you are asking for trouble? Hello? I just see Brother Dalde Janas. I say, oh, I, I, miracle contact. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> No, 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 you know. If, if. <laughs> I say, yes, Lord, I love this car. This kind. This kind, Lord. This kind, Lord. Maka. Even if you sabako roko sida. God is a father. He will not answer that prayer. Are you getting what I'm talking about? The question is not the giving of the car. It is how to sustain the car on the road. Maintenance. Please do you understand what I'm talking about? Just know that prayer does not answer itself. It is God that answers prayer. Do you understand? Aha. It's good for you to pray. And when you pray, believe that God has had you. Now, what you are asking now, God will say, I've done it. And that will not manifest in the next 20 years. Don't say God did not. He answered you. Say, if you had him, he told you, I've answered you. And God does not tell lies. Even if you don't see the manifestation in 10 years. Even if you don't see the manifestation in 20 years, wait for it. That is where faith comes. Please, do you learn to this point? So, rest and be joyously expectant. Now, let's peruse these scriptures and we stop there and we pray. Now, come to Exodus 14. Exodus 14, 14. The Lord will fight for you. And you shall hold your peace. Amen. Amen. Matthew 6. God said, I'm going to fight for you. That's, that's, that's a promise. And God is committed. Just, just trust, trust that. Trust that. Trust that promise. In Matthew chapter 6. Verses 31 to 33. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Do you hear that? Aha. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Now, if you understand this scripture, I said, don't worry. Don't worry for anything. Don't, do not worry for anything. The truth of the matter is that at least in a day you will eat twice. Do you hear what I say? You will eat and you will never walk nakedly. He knew it. Your father knows that you need this thing. He knows that you need these basic things of life. What you just need is to trust him. I beg of you, please. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. Second Chronicles 20 verse 17. Second Chronicles 20 verse 17. He said, you will not need to fight in this battle. You don't need to fight this battle. And when God says you will not, you will not need to fight this battle, does not mean that you will not go to war. Hello? God will not, when God says you will not need to fight, does not mean that you will be sleeping when the enemies are coming. You will go to war. And when you get to the battlefront, God will now show up on your behalf. That's why I invited you to that vigil. Come to free, come to pray. And when you come to pray, trust God. 
that God is saying, you will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them for the Lord is with you. Psalm 46 verse 10. Psalm 46 verse 10. Say, be still. Do you hear that? Be still. What God is saying is that rest. Please help me tell you the next person to you, rest. Please rest, rest. Rest in the Lord. Rest in the Lord. Rest in the Lord. You don't need to stay awake all the night. And you are just worrying. Please don't worry yourself to death. Rest, 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 rest. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted in the heart. God will be exalted over your case. He be exalted in your life. Please, do you learn to this point? Please, prayer must become your lifestyle. Yeah. Start to build and have a personal altar of prayer. Do you understand that? Yeah. If God has blessed you with speaking in tongues, every day of your life, you must use one hour. You must spend one hour to speak in tongues. On your personal altar. Don't pray in understanding. Pray in tongues for one hour. You don't need to know what you are saying. If you need to know, the Holy Spirit will let you know. There is a power in praying in tongues. If God bless you that you marry a woman or you marry a man in Christ please make your spouse a team. Build a team. Build a team in the place of prayer. Don't, you are not married to fight one another. God didn't give you wife for you to fight your wife or fight your husband. Let your spirit align. You will offend one another. You need to know that. You will hurt one another, but it will not be a deliberate act. You just have to forgive. You have to forget. Don't turn your back against one another. Any couple that divide against themselves will not stand. It's a principle in heaven and it's a principle in hell. Matthew 12, 24 and 25, Jesus said, any house that's against one another shall not stand. If you are in a family, build a family altar. Even if the father in the house did not call you to prayer meeting. You are a member of that family. Ask them. Just tell them that in this family we'll be praying every 9 p.m. Just create a prayer altar when you know everybody is available. Don't be religious about it. If you cannot do it in the morning, make sure you do it in the night. The family must pray together at least once in a day. Don't run away from corporate altar. Trust God. Will you lay your right hand on your chest? Tell your heart, my heart, trust God. Trust God, trust God. Don't look elsewhere. God is your source. God is your source. You came from him, you will return to him. It is God that will sustain you. Rest in the Lord. Rest in the Lord. Rest in the Lord. Rest in the Lord. Please speak to your heart. Rest in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. God is able. God is able to fight all your battles. God is able to take care of you. God is able to nourish you and to sustain you. You don't need to trust any man. Even if you trust Geo, you are down for. You must trust God. My heart, trust the Lord.
It is done in Jesus' name.